Good morning, everyone. No trip to Lake Superior would be complete without capturing the passage of an iron ore carrier under Duluth's historic lift bridge. On this particular morning, we're greeted by the 1,000-foot American Century, nosing her way out of the ship canal with 68,000 tons of taconite ore headed for Cleveland, Ohio. The American Century was built in 1981 in my hometown of Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. And originally she was named the Columbia Star. She and several other vessels were purchased by American Steamship Company in 2006. And she underwent a name change at that time to be consistent with other freighters in their fleet. As she heads out into the lake, she sends out a salute to the bridge tender who responds in kind. Welcome back to the channel, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. I'm Kevin O'Donnell. This is the third and final chapter in our Great Lakes adventure. In this episode, we explore and photograph the coast of Lake Superior in Minnesota, the interior of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and northern Wisconsin, capturing images in Silver Bay, Hurley, Ironwood, and Marquette from epic sunrises to the highest cliffs on the entire Great Lakes, from forgotten mining towns to ghost ports. It's all coming up in this edition of Behind the Door. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I'm continuing our, our trip here to the north shore of Lake Superior. This is day four, I think. <laughs> Scouted this place yesterday and had to come back. It's a place called Black Beach, just north of Silver Bay, Minnesota. And the sand is quite dark. I imagine when it rains or when the sand is wet, it's really dark. Uh, but they call it Black Beach because it's actually the site of the tailings from an iron ore mining process, just about a mile from here probably hear it in the background. There's a taconite ore processing plant where they take the raw rock, grind it down, make a slurry out of it, and form these taconite pellets that's like at least like 65-75% iron. That's what's loaded into the cargo ships in Duluth and two harbors here in Minnesota. Superior, Wisconsin, near Duluth, and that's you know, brought down to Gary, Indiana, Cleveland, Toledo, those places to make iron ore, for the, or to make iron uh, at the steel mills. So this is where the process begins. We're not far from the, the Masabi Range, the Iron Range in Minnesota. So it's brought here in train cars, processed at this plant, and with the tailings, this was an old deposit area for the tailings where everything is removed. The only thing that's left in here is rock. Well, there is a little bit of iron ore in it because I dropped my magnetic uh, holder here from my microphone into this earlier and the whole thing was just glommed on with, you know, with, with sand, with this fine, fine, fine stone. So, but anyway, so we're out here this morning uh, for a sunrise, which is gonna rise in that direction, straight out. And you can see where I have this island in the middle of this cove. I didn't actually come for this shot, but I just can't pass this shot up. Uh, it's really, really beautiful. And we still have another 10 minutes to go before sunrise. And I'm hoping that the sunrise are gonna catch these rocks. That's the shot I came for down by the beach to get the, the water's edge in the black beach. But for now, I while I'm setting up, I thought, I would have time here to take some various photos of the sky here 
with this island in the foreground and they're just really beautiful. I put on an ND filter. I started with a three stop ND filter, stepped up to the six. Now I may go up to the 10 stop because what I'm trying to do is create a long exposure to flatten out this water. Even though the water appears very still right now, it just makes it smooth as glass and really saturates the colors as well in the sky. Then we have the stark contrast of the island in the background. Show you what that all looks like here. So you can see my histogram there. I'm pretty much to the left side, which is where I want to be. Shooting this at six seconds, F7.1, ISO 100, 70 to 200 miller, millimeter range. I'm shooting right now at about 70 millimeters. Focus on the island. Two second timer. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? So I'm going to change filters here, 10 stop neutral density filter, just as the sun is coming up now. Because I want to, because it's getting brighter out, I want to keep my shutter speed low until even out that water. So I'm shooting at 1 20th of a second, 7.1, ISO 100, because that sun's coming up just behind that island. Just a sliver of sun. All right, we have to find our next composition over here before that sun goes behind those clouds. But there's a lot of cloud coming in right now. And I really want to catch the sunlight on those rocks. All right, better make fast. Actually sitting down at the water's edge along the black beach here and I was hoping to get the sun peeking through the clouds here lighting up these rocks but that doesn't look like it's gonna happen maybe briefly clouds are moving in Let's see what we get What I'll do is pack up and head over to Palisades Park and uh, maybe take some drone footage there if the skies clear up. The Palisades are these bluffs of, of basalt and rhyolite that are just sheer down to the water, up to 300 feet high. Yeah, I think that's where we'll head next. Too bad for those clouds moving in because I really could have used uh, <laughs> a couple more shots down by the water's edge there. Three lenses, filters.
headed south and east, inland from Lake Superior, through the heart of the Upper Peninsula, on our way to Marquette, Michigan, stopping in what poet Ralph Murray referred to as the big land of Tookaway. Tookaway iron, copper, silver, took away first growth timber and First Nation people, took away everything of value, but the invaluable remains, flourishes, the river flows, the trees grow, a few people eke out a life. It was a sobering experience. Good morning everyone from Ironwood, Michigan on the border of Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula of the state of Michigan, commonly called the UP. We left the North Shore of Lake Superior yesterday. Today's day five. We're heading across the lower portion of Lake Superior today to the town of Marquette. But Marquette is a long drive, so we stopped about halfway in Ironwood. And this area, Ironwood, and just across the river into early Wisconsin, just beyond that, town of Montreal, Wisconsin, very famous for its iron mines. And they really produced a lot of iron ore here beginning around the 1890s through the 1960s. In the early 1960s, all the mines closed and these towns, uh, the people just deserted them. This town of iron has some remarkable buildings and uh, remarkable remnants of architecture that I wanted to capture. So I've taken a few photos already, but I had to stop in front of this mural in downtown Ironwood, which is really dedicated to the miners of this area. Beautiful, it's fabulous, but it's sad to see what has become of these towns. Not so much Ironwood. Ironwood has managed to kind of hang on, but the town of Hurley. I mean, there's no industry up here, you know. There's timber and no more mining. So, yeah, about the only thing that this town is most famous for actually is it was the home of Ralph Capone, who was Al Capone's brother, younger brother, who took over Al Capone's um, business in Chicago um, from his home in Miami after Al Capone went to to prison. Ralph eventually went to prison as well. And then afterward, he wanted to get away from everything. He wanted to kind of hide out. What better place to hide out than in the dying mining town of Ironwood, Michigan, or Hurley, Wisconsin. I think Hurley. He lived in Hurley. So, all right. So we're going to take a few more photos here and move on.
morning. It is a very cold one this morning. Uh, we are in Marquette, Michigan on the southern shores of Lake Superior in the UP and we've been here for a day or so and did some scouting yesterday. Went over to the lighthouse, took a tour of the lighthouse, scouted that out yesterday. Unfortunately the weather turned really really nasty. It was about 45 degrees and kind of a sleety rain all day yesterday. Didn't get a chance to shoot anything. This morning, rain let up, rain let up, but it's still quite overcast. You can see here it's just after sunrise. Uh, but I came here down to what is known as the, the old abandoned ore dock here in Marquette and it is a magnificent structure. It's absolutely stunning how beautiful this thing is and the history behind this. There are still working ore docks north of here near Presque Isle, uh, just a few miles north. But this is the old ore dock near the harbor in town. And I thought I would try my hand today at a long exposure. Uh, kind of uh, very... Um, minimalist photo semi-abstract very straightforward i have a 24 to 105 lens on here i'm probably going to put on a three stop or six stop neutral density filter to extend my shutter speed so i can smooth out this water and uh, get this beautiful reflection here some ducks swimming in the water as well so that's the shot today I think a vertical orientation of this would be nice since it's such a vertical structure. Put the, uh, the center light end of the structure right in the center of the shot. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, I'm going to want about a 20 second exposure or so. I'll try a, I'm going to sit down, <laughs> this is really hard on the knees and the feet, probably get a little muddy. Colleen and I had a wonderful evening last night at the hotel. Beautiful hotel, an old hotel, a landmark hotel. And uh, went out for a wonderful dinner since it was going to be our last night here. Uh, very fancy, very fancy dinner. Six stop, we'll start there. Came back, had a nightcap, went to bed early because. You know, this getting up at 4 and 5 in the morning, 3, 4 and 5 in the morning, takes its toll after a while. Colleen has a lay on in bed. She stays in bed. I, uh, I love that time of day. It's my favorite time of day. Okay, let's see what we got here. Now, <clears throat> here's the battle I'm fighting here now. The sky's much brighter than the structure. The structure is long and uh, dark. 
and the water is somewhere in between. So I want to make sure I can capture the detail of the pillars inside the your loading pier here. So I'm going to end up having to use probably a 10 stop filter. long exposure here. Yeah, so today is our drive home day. It's been a great six days. It really has. I wanted this trip to be push myself here in terms of creativity and in terms of types of photographs so not just taking seascapes or landscape photos uh, oh man that's gorgeous I wanted to try some some different things some uh, abstracts and semi abstracts some long exposures some intentional camera movement stuff and of course, uh, lighthouses and sunrises and, and all of that. Got plenty of that in too. So I didn't just come out for one type of photograph or one type of subject. I tried to be as diverse as I could and just kind of broaden my portfolio a little bit, I guess. So I'm just now playing around with uh, different exposures. Like I say, this is pretty much a no frill shot. It's interesting, these ducks are swimming in the water here. But on such a long exposure, you don't see them. I think that'll make a lovely black and white. I do love the sepia color to it though. 15 seconds. F8 ISO 400. Morning. So I set the two second timer. I also turned the mirror lockup on so that there isn't any slap of the mirror when the shutter opens and releases that might affect uh, vibration, cause vibration. Probably redundant having a two second timer, but it doesn't hurt to have it on. And I uh, also set it to manual focus, so my focusing never changes. Uh, it's set more or less to infinity. Our Lake Superior journey has now come to an end. Thanks for watching, everyone. I really appreciate you tuning in. And until next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you down the road. <laughs>